of the executive in the government of Kenya. President William Ruto stroking his master pen, making a couple of changes at the level of uh, uh, cabinet secretaries, at the level of principal uh, secretaries, as well as ambassadors in the government of Kenya. Of course, today's edition of Kenya's bold newspaper, The Standard, has broken down the shock cabinet reshuffle. In case you want more details, make sure you grab yourself a copy and find out some of the big hits and misses in this particular new broom, as it has been described in Kenya's bold newspaper. Apart from that, we'll be taking a look at some of the other stories that are making headlines right now as we speak. Equally, a little bit later on, we'll shift focus to what exactly Kenyans are talking about on the social media. Away from that, let's take a look at one of the top developing stories at this hour. And we'll just be crossing over in a few, all to do with the International Center for Representative Health Kenya, which is this morning releasing a survey report on gender-based violence and gender norms in the country. Let's just cross over and listen in to that live event. In here, when we looked at the past year, prevalence of physical or sexual intimate partner violence. This is among partnered young women, which as we know are, you know, the norm, um, most of our young women in the sample were partnered. And we see here that about 17% were reporting sexual partner violence past year only, and 23% physical IPV. These are, uh, there's a little bit of overlap as you imagine, so we've got about 28% of young women experiencing partner violence in the past year alone. So this is very high, even when we think about our national data and our global data on this topic. So, and this is why we're all gathered here today, to improve our programming and our policies and strengthen our systems to prevent and respond um, to IPV and other forms of GBV. What was the overlap? It's always important to understand, are we seeing physical violence? Are we seeing sexual violence? What we see here is that most of the women that told us about sexual IPV also experienced physical violence. We see this all around the world when similar patterns. Um, and this means if we are encountering as programmers and our medical clinics, if we're encountering people that have experienced sexual partner violence, um, they, they likely also have physical violence going on in the home um, as well or with their partners. <clears throat> so really important to be thinking about this and then how does this compare? How do, what is the totality of the forms of GBV that are affecting young women? We heard earlier about how important it is to look at sexual harassment, um, as well as non-partner sexual violence and intimate partner violence. What we see here is that we have about 4.8% of our sample reporting an experience of non-partner sexual violence. Um, Perhaps some underreporting here, but this was the lowest form that was reported, even with all of our ethical protections, our best practices and survey measurement, um, and the training that is provided, the extensive training that is provided to our team on how to do this work well. The IPV, which you just saw, was the 28%, so that's really in the middle, about one in four women. And then when we look at sexual harassment, 71%, right? So this is a big problem. That's why we're here today. I think we know that this is a problem. But then when we see this number, we see, wow, this is so normative in the lives of young women in Nairobi. <clears throat> so what did that sexual harassment look like? We uh, tested out some new measures that came to us through the Emerge repository to really understand um, what are the types of experiences. You can see that the most common is being stared at or leered at. Um, and then we see a lot of unwanted sexual comments, jokes, and gestures. This probably really resonates with all of us in the room, um, but seeing these numbers tell us how important it is, how actionable this is for us to really respond to, um, together with all of the brain power and talent in this room. Um, and you can see uh, a, a variation in some of the other forms of um, experiences as well. Um, the touched, grabbed, or pinched, that would be one of the more egregious forms. Um, we're seeing that at about one-third. Okay. Mm -mm. We also always want to understand how safe do people feel? Where are they feeling safe and unsafe? And you can see here that people, despite the high prevalence of IPV, are feeling very safe at home 
and it's much less so in the public spaces. That's where the safety perception is the lowest um, for young women. Again, reflecting what we just saw around um, sexual harassment. As we think about how to improve services and ensure safety for women so they can be economically active, so they can be mobile and come and go, um, the safety perceptions in, at home and in public are so important for us on that, in that process. I will offer you a few qualitative findings on women's safety, um, although I think that reading these um, cannot at all compare